Hello everyone, this is Dave Collin from Broken Games, back with another video. And, uh, as you can see, I have a huge stack of games right here and here, actually. And today, I thought... Today's gonna be kind of a special, um, video for the series, because... Well, one, it's been a little while since I've been able to really make videos, um... It's not really a burnout, it's just... I... I don't make videos in, uh, every week, you know what I mean? Um, it's just not my thing. But, I don't know if any of you want me to do this for any of the other consoles I own, or, um, whatnot. But, in fact, actually, I'm missing a game right there. That happens sometimes when you're trying to look for a bunch of games to do videos on. Um, but, as we all know, the PS3 is on its way out the door now, and, uh, the new console generation has officially started, and, um, the PS3 overall is the system I got the most use out of this generation, and, um, you know, per personally, it's just my favorite, just because of all the exclusives Sony put out, all the content, they put out the most powerful, uh, system out there, besides the PC, and, um, I just love the PS3 to death, and I love the Wii, and I love the 360 to a point. But, I just got so much use out of the PlayStation 3, and, um... I think I'm just gonna make a video about all the games I've collected on. This is, uh, my PS3 collection. Obviously, I won't really be talking about, uh, some of the games, because some of them... I'll be mentioning in reviews and things like that. Um, but anyway, let's get started with one of the first games in my collection is Uncharted Drake's Fortune. And, uh, as a game, I think this is as, as flawed as it can get for the series. I think it's fun running gun stuff, but, uh, overall, I think that for Naughty Dog's first outing on this, I was a little disappointed with it, only because nothing can really beat Jack and Daxter and Crash Bandicoot for me. Um, and as far as this game goes, I think that they did a lot of things right, and it wasn't until the next game that they really started getting things right, Uncharted 2 Among Thieves. And I really like uh, Uncharted 2 Among Thieves, because not only did it start to show the technical prowess of the PlayStation 3, it really started to also showcase that games were starting to get a little more cinematic at this point. You know, we've had games before this getting real cinematic, but Uncharted 2 really defines that, and has a really nice story to boot. Um, I think anyone with a PS3 who hasn't played this game definitely needs to. Everyone's jaw was just dropped when this game was first announced and showed off, and I think it's definitely one to have in your collection. But by far my favorite of the series has to be Uncharted 3 Drake's Deception. Um, the game isn't technically... Uh, as good looking as the other games, but um, I think personally, as a fan, it, maybe not as good looking, but it looks fine. Uh, I should state that uh, it looks just not much better. You know, it doesn't really show off any more of what the PS3 can do, honestly. But Drake's Deception d does something a little different in my eyes. It actually proves some backstory to the characters in this game in this series. And that was my favorite part about this game. I absolutely love the story of this game. I love the backstory about it, um, and if this, this isn't really the end of Uncharted, I doubt, um, but I think that overall it's a fun game to pick up, and I definitely recommend you pick up the whole Uncharted series as a whole if you haven't already. Alright, next up is The Last of Us, another Naughty Dog game of this generation. Uh, I plan on talking about this in a review. If I don't, then I don't know. I I really love this game a lot, honestly. Um, but as a gameplay experience, not so much. I definitely enjoyed the story a lot more. Oh my gosh, some memories with this game. Infamous. Um, definitely one of my favorite games of this generation. Uh, Infamous is an absolutely great first-party exclusive to the PlayStation 3. Um, it has a great story and a great sort of comic book look. I like the look of the game, and overall, it doesn't really showcase what the PS3 could do. I'm pretty sure the 360 could do whatever this game threw at it just fine. But, as its first uh, installment, Infamous is definitely a great game to pick up and a great series to follow. I cannot 
I cannot wait for Infamous Second Son, because that game looks incredible. And then, of course, we have after that, Infamous 2. And Infamous 2 is my favorite of the two games. And while Infamous 1 focused a little more on its story, this one kind of neglects it in a few ways. Um, in more ways than one, actually. Uh, but I think that in a gameplay standpoint, this game had a lot of improvements over the first one. And in a couple ways, actually made the mechanics a little more fleshed out. Um, Infamous 2 is definitely my favorite of the two. A lot of people say Infamous 1 is the, fa is, uh, the favorite of the two because of its, I guess, story. The story was, it was more intricate in Infamous 1, but I still think the story is left intact here. It was a very, very well-made sequel, and I recommend anyone pick it up. It's still a really fun game to play. Oh, God. Okay, so here comes my realization. If, you, if you're if you seeing the case right now on this, by the way, it's all crappy because I, I don't really play this game anymore. So when I buy another game that I like more, I replace the case on it so it looks nicer. But MAG, standing for a massive action game. MAG is a game where um, you could basically play with you and 300 and something other people in a, one server, and it was a first-person shooter, and first-person shooters and I don't really go back, we don't date back very well, um, I'll say that much. Sorry, that's bugging me. Um, and this game definitely brought me into the light of how first-person shooters can be fun, because I really enjoyed this game a lot. The control, the control scheme is a little odd, but um, sadly, uh, the people who made the Zipper Interactive went out of business. Uh, they disbanded long ago. I think the last game they made was a PS Vita game. And uh, I, I logged on to this game just for old times sake, just to le relive some memories. And I found out that this, play this game's uh, servers will be closing on the 28th of this month. It's kind of odd. It's just, I, this game was so big and it had so much promise. Sadly, I guess it didn't really live up to the hype. Um, and I think a lot of people still played it, but overall, uh, I think it was kind of missed out on. I would like to see so Sony try something more with this eventually. And here, here's another game I have a lot of memories with, is Little Big Planet. Little Big Planet is a game where you can create anything you want, and I love Little Big Planet because it was the first PlayStation 3 game I got. I remember when I first got my, my fat 60 gigabyte, or no, 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 it was an 80 gigabyte, PlayStation 3 console. Um, I wanted to try Call of Duty. Uh, that was one of the reasons I bought the PlayStation, so I could play online with friends. My parents were kind of against me buying Raid M games at the age of 14, it was, maybe 13, maybe 12, I don't remember. Um, but, so I ended up picking up this game, Little Big Planet. And um, I was still really like looking forward to see what we could do, and so I got online with my friend Steve, and we played this a lot. And you know, I have to admit, I didn't play this as much as I thought I would, because right after I got this, I ended up picking up Infamous, and that kind of took over my playtime ever since then. But I still hold Little Big Planet in high regards. This is a beautiful game. It's really, really fun. Very challenging at points, though, and uh, it will definitely put up that challenge. But in terms of like how indie games started, or something like Minecraft, Minecraft obviously blew sales of this out of the water. But Little Big Planet really was the start of uh, these kinds of games, making whatever you want, whenever you want, and things like that. And then we have we move on to Little Big Planet 2, and this is the special edition as opposed to the Game of the Year edition, I guess it didn't win Game of the Year. But, really the only reason I have this was because of my new PlayStation 3. Um, when I, it, it's, I guess it's a little bit of a story time, I was playing Catherine way back when, and uh, I happened to get a hold of a friend from work, uh, I used to work at another job, and she let me log on to her account and download a bunch of games, and at, to a point that worked. Um, but I think I accidentally overloaded the console, and so I needed more space, and I replaced, ended up replacing my 80 gigabyte hard drive with a 500 gigabyte. That didn't work out too well because um, it turns out 
the discrete speed was fine. I probably could have downloaded a few more games and would have been fine. The problem was I was downloading too much at once, and I happened to have a PlayStation Plus subscription at that time, which even when my PlayStation 3 was off, it would download things. And so it eventually crashed my system, and here I am. I found a Game of the Year bundle of the PlayStation 3 coming with two games, and this was one of them. I, I have to admit, I didn't really play this game too much, but one fond memory I have with it is that when I first picked up my new PlayStation 3, me and my sister uh, started playing this game, and my mom happened to be sitting in the room, and she thought it was hilarious how we could grab each other and throw each other into bottomless pits, and it was just so much fun, because Little Big Planet 2 is definitely like a game you play with everyone else, and I think anyone who hasn't tried the Little Big Planet series definitely does need to try it because it's just a fun series. Um, a game I haven't really played too much of is Heavy Rain, and it's a David Cage game. Um, and honestly, uh, I watched an LP of this game, which is why I didn't really play too much into it. Um, I think the premise is interesting, and I think I like the characters and everything like that, even though the, the voice acting and things like that can be cheesy. Um, but I watched an LP of this game beforehand, and I loved the story. I couldn't get enough of it. That's why I kept watching the Let's Play. Um, but I think that now that um, a few years have passed since I've watched the Let's Play, I'm going to eventually give this another chance when I have the time, because I really do. I really am interesting to s interested to see what other endings I could get in this game. And I like the kind of quick time event sort of stuff, so... Uh, a game I don't really need to talk about that much is the Sly Cooper Collection. Um, it's just a collection of the three games. They did a pretty good job porting them all over. Uh, as you could tell, Senzaru went to uh, make Sly 4 Thieves in Time, Sly Cooper Thieves in Time is this cause. I wish they really would have called it Sly 4, but I guess they weren't trying to confuse people because it's been so long. I plan on reviewing this game, so we're going to skip that for now. The Jack and Daxter Collection, once again, they did a pretty good job porting these over. Um, there were a few technical hiccups here and there. Uh, I can only imagine it's because I actually watched a, a video about Naughty Dog and um, how they made these games, and apparently they were doing stuff on the PlayStation 2 they weren't supposed to, like accessing memory from the PlayStation 1 side of it. And uh, But still, like I, I think this is the perfect way to experience these games, uh, especially with the trophy system, and it looks really nice in HD. And if you have a 3D TV, you can also do that. The Ico and the Shadow Colossus Collection, I like these games a lot, not really much of a need to talk about them. If you are a PlayStation owner of any type, you should really own these games. Uh, the Ratchet and Clank Collection, I had to get this because I only own the second one on PlayStation 2. Not that I haven't played the others, I have, but um, I thought that the Ratchet and Clank games were really fun. But let's be honest here, the main reason I picked this game up was for... The Sly Cooper Thieves in Time demo that came with it. But still, though, I really enjoy this game a lot, and I think that a lot of people, or the game series a lot, and I think that people um, should really, really give this a chance. The problem with this collection is, is that it has a couple of hiccups here and there, and um, honestly, there was actually like, a lot of music hiccups as well. So I think this is definitely the worst collection out of the three. I don't know who they decided to hire to make this collection, um, but whoever they did hire didn't do a very great job at it uh, at most points, but it still holds well, and um, what's cool about it is they actually brought back the online mode from Ratchet & Clank 3, so if you're into that, definitely, you know, pick this up. Uh, I don't know how many people are on the servers because I never really tried it. Uh, Ratchet & Clank Future Tools of Destruction, definitely one of my favorite Ratchet & Clank games of all time. I really love the premise of this game, I love the challenge, I love the graphics. Literally, when the PlayStation 3 was very, very much struggling with games, this game came along and really showed off what the PlayStation 3 could do. And, um, I love the Ratchet & Clank games, not as much as Sly Cooper or Jack & Daxter, but... You know, I think there's still something to be said about this series, and I think everyone should pick this, the Ratchet & Clank games up, like I've said a million and a half times. And then there is my favorite Ratchet & Clank game, Ratchet & Clank A Crack in Time. Ratchet & Clank A Crack in Time is my favorite of the series. Like, out of all of them, I love Ratchet & Clank A Crack in Time the most. Why? Because it's got such an, 
a, a Pixar and sort of Disney-esque story, which makes you actually feel for the characters. And not only that, but it has a sense of progression and this difficulty that you will never find anywhere else. And you're going to love that. Everyone who plays the series is going to love that. I think the only problem really is, is that it's kind of a short game. It's only about eight or nine hours long. And so there's not and there's not a lot to go out of your way to collect. And it doesn't feel as expansive as it could be as compared to the other Ratchet and Clank games. But definitely, if you are a fan of platforming and shooting and all this old school stuff, you're gonna love this game because it not only looks great, but it plays great and has a great story. And the ending to this game almost made me ball my eyes out because I'm like, where has my childhood gone? I love this game. Uh, Ratchet and Clank, Crack and Time. And then, uh, remember how I mentioned that there was another game that came with my PlayStation 3 bundle, aside from Little Big Planet 2? Well, it was this, Ratchet and Clank All for One. I haven't really given this game a great chance because I didn't think... I, I played it for about an hour, and I'll say that I didn't have anyone to play with. Oh, crap. Ugh, my game collection's falling over here. It looks like it's still about to slip. Anyway... Um, I didn't really have anyone to play with in this game, and I really want to get together with some friends one day and really dig into what this game can do. But I didn't think it was, on top of that, that funny story-wise, and, um, I felt like it was kind of bare-bones for a Ratchet game, and this was kind of the reason I never really picked up, uh, any of the other Ratchet games, and I really want to try Into the Nexus, but a lot of people, from what I'm hearing, I'm hearing it's really fun, but it's really, really short. Even shorter than Crack in Time, which is kind of surprising. So, I don't think Insomniac um, really lives up to the hype that they once uh, had with these games, but what can you do? Next up is the Metal Gear Solid HD Collection, and as a fan of Metal Gear, I picked this up mostly solely for Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. I really wanted to play it on a system with two analog sticks, I guess, and um, this was the perfect game to do it with. And on top of that, I could play online with people, and I really, really like this collection a lot. Um, and I like what they did with it and everything like that. I really like the, everything from the case, too. That's a really, really nice touch. But um, if you ever want to get into the Metal Gear series and you're afraid to kind of start off with it, this isn't actually the collection you want to pick up. Uh, about two years ago, I probably would have said, yeah, pick this up, you want to get in with this. But the only way you can really do that is buying by buying a PS3, because you can get the Legends Collection, which comes with Metal Gear Solid 1 through 4, Peace Walker, and uh, the original two Metal Gears, and a comic, and Metal Gear Solid 4, which I'll be talking about in a sec. And that's about maybe 60 bucks, and that's a great deal, because... The Metal Gear games are so great, I wish everyone would play them, and I'm so psyched for Metal Gear Solid 5. And then speaking of Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots. <laughs> I have so many memories of this game, because, honestly, it wasn't the first Metal Gear Solid I picked up, but it was the first one I could really, really get into. And, um, it was really the, one of the first games I played with, like, the HDMI capabilities and such. And I played this game to death when I got it. I remember um, I bought it with allowance money that I earned from my parents um, when I before I even had a job, any sort of job. And this game has a lot of uh, nostalgia factors for me. And I honestly, it might be the best game on the PlayStation 3 for me. Um, maybe I don't know if the best game of the generation. It might be. Uh, I it's hard for me to even say because. This game has so much content, but what a lot of people wouldn't like about it is how emphasized the story is. And the thing is, people are stupid. They won't understand the story of Metal Gear. And I'm not gonna, I'm not tell, saying anyone who doesn't understand the Metal Gear universe is stupid. But um, Metal Gear is a very, very complicated series where you have to actually listen to what they're saying. And if you listen to what they're saying, it's not too hard to understand uh, once you're able to figure all of it out. With that said, I recommend picking this game up um, in the Legacy Collection, like I said before. Uh, it's definitely the better way to pick it up. Uh, but if you are a fan of collection, uh, collecting things, then I recommend picking up this version, and it's only about 8 bucks. Another game I'm going to be talking about in a review is Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. I recently picked up the PC version of this. I really love this game, but we'll get to that when we get to that. A game I already reviewed is uh, PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, so we can skip that. Fun game, fun party game. That's all I'm going to say. 
A game I absolutely love to death is Persona 4 Arena. While it doesn't have the story of Persona 4 or 3, uh, I still really enjoy the fighting mechanics of this game. I can really see how uh, the fans of this series would be happy with it too, because once you can get used to the fighting mechanics of this game, you're going to be set. You're going to love it. And um, this game also has a 30-hour story mode to keep you entertained. The only thing I wish that was expanded on in this game was not just going for Persona 3 and 4 characters, but going for the whole universe of Persona characters. I really wish that was expanded on a little more. And though it, it is slightly expanded on, for there is a character from Persona 2 in this game somewhere, I'm not going to spoil that. Um... I still think that there should have been more characters. I think there's only about 14 characters in this game. Uh, or maybe even 12, I'm not sure. Um, but all I know is that there are there is going to be a sequel to this game, and um, it's called Persona 4 The Ultimax Ultra Suplex Hold, I think it's called. and Or no, The Ultimax Ultra Suplex Hold. I think that's how you say it. Um, which will include three more characters and shadow versions of all of the characters. Which should be interesting, and new stages, and I think a new story, more or less. Um, I'm looking forward to that. I hope it comes to America. I'd really like to play that. Okay, Marvel vs. Capcom, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. No, I did not buy this new. I would not give Capcom my money for this game. Um, how I actually came upon this game was... Through the PlayStation Vita, I actually bought it for like two, five, maybe two or three bucks on the PlayStation Store on a sale they had, and so I wanted to pick up the PlayStation 3 version just to, just for old times' sake. And um, I really enjoyed this game a lot. It's a fun combo fighter. I recommend picking this game up. Definitely used. Do not give Capcom your money. Uh, that's all I'm gonna say. Uh, another PlayStation 3 exclusive. Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm, and I remember first seeing this game at my friend Steve's house. He used to be into Naruto, um, a lot more than I was, that's for sure. And I remember he was downloading the demo for this game, and we tried this, I was sleeping over his house one night, and we tried this game out, <coughs> and I could not believe what I was seeing. Uh, this game, even to this day, the cell shaded look looks almost directly like the anime, and it's crazy, because this game looks so amazingly awesome, and I love it. I absolutely love the look of this game, I love the design of this game, and um, I really just wish there was like more of a fleshed out story mode in this game. Um, but that's about it, because it is a really fun game, and it's a very, very good 3D fighting game. Um, and I recommend uh, picking it up if you're into Naruto. Of course, I have the sequel to the game, uh, Ultimate Ninja Storm 2. I actually own Ultimate Ninja Storm 3, though you won't be seeing it in this game. And I owned uh, Ultimate Ninja Storm Generations and traded that in right away because I didn't think it was that worth it. But Ultimate Ninja Storm 2 is basically er everything I wanted out of the first game. Um, with a little bit of a graphics... I guess, I, I mean, the graphics don't look as good in this game, and I really like the, the look of the first game a lot better. I just think it had a better bloom effects. If that's just me, I don't know. Um, there were parts of this game that looked better. There were a lot of the fights that were a lot grander, and I really love how this game took the story, because the story mode is a lot more fleshed out. It actually you, pretty much takes you through the whole anime of um, the Shippuden parts of it, or most of the Shippuden parts. So, I... You know, if like I said, if you're a fan of Naruto, I would definitely, and you know what happens after the main series, like in that Storm 1 takes place, and you're just really interested in uh, watch, learning the Shippuden saga of it, definitely pick up the games after the first one. Um, this is not exclusive to PlayStation 3, by the way, it is also on 360. Okay, next up is Nino Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch, and... I played this game for quite a some amount of hours. I never beat it, um, just because I don't really get the time to, or the patience even, to play these kinds of games. But from what I played, I absolutely loved. I love level 5. I, I think that's just a, a given for me. And that's not even saying much, because I haven't played Dark Cloud, um, one of their most popular series on the PlayStation 2. But I have played uh, Professor Layton and one of their other RPGs I'll be getting to. So, needless to say, I actually asked for this for my birthday, and uh, my parents got it for me. And I think that um, 
anyone who's a fan of uh, Miyazaki, the guy who does stuff for uh, Ghibli Studio, I think his name is Miyazaki. I don't remember. Either way, uh, the people at Studio Ghibli, the guys who made like stuff like Howl's Moving Castle, uh, actually animated and did a lot of the art direction for this game, and it looks gorgeous, and I recommend you pick it up. The only thing is that this game's a little hard, and some of the RPG elements of this game, like the 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 follower system, I think it's what it's called. I forget what they're called, but it's pretty much like a Pokemon simulator. Um, I wasn't exactly a huge fan of it, and uh, I think it's okay if you can get past that aspect, though. That's most of the reason I stopped playing it, actually, is because I wasn't exactly enjoying the, the system they had going. Um, but other than that, I think I like the way the system was placed out. I like how it, it's kind of like in a real-time setting. So that's pretty cool. Okay, another level 5 game is White Knight Chronicles 2, which actually subsequently comes with White Knight Chronicles 1. I never even got to White Knight Chronicles 2 because I couldn't get through White Knight Chronicles 1. Like I said, it requires a lot of time and patience from me. Um... A lot of people don't like White Knight Chronicles, and I could see why. Uh, it's a very hit or miss in its RPG elements, but I think it alludes more to the action-oriented people, and then also to the, the typical JRPG people, like turn-based systems. And while I think this game series is really fun, um, I think it's also really flawed in its story in a couple ways. But I, th I still think um, people could find enjoyment out of this RPG. It's, it's a really fun series. Alright, next up is a game I already reviewed, or uh, a collection I already reviewed, the Kingdom Hearts 1.5 HD Remix. I don't feel I need to talk about that any more than I have. Um, so yeah. Uh, I guess I might as well get this out of the way now. Beyond Two Souls, I'm really debating talking about this game. Um, because I'm not even finished it yet, and, um, I was planning on talking about it at first, and I had some really, really good thoughts going in, but I was really, really, like, upset. I didn't want to pick this game up right away, basically. Um, the reason being is because a lot of people were disappointed with this game, and one of the reasons for that, uh, is because of the narrative. And now that I'm playing more through it, I can sort of see what people are talking about. And it's still an enjoyable game. I enjoy it a lot, but um, a lot of people are really disappointed with this. I really want to see how it pans out before I talk about it anymore, because I can't really say too much without um, really being wrong, because I, I played the first maybe two or three, maybe four hours of this game, and was really loving the narrative. But as I move forward into it and it gets more complicated, um, I'm starting to enjoy it less and less, so we'll see how it pans out. I hope it does, uh, because I, I think it'd be a real waste, um, to not pan that narrative out. Alright, this is a game my sister has, um, it's the FIFA game World Cup. Uh, I don't really play sports games, so not my cup of tea. Um, <clears throat> next up is Sports Champions, a game that came with the PlayStation Move. Uh, Sports Champions is a really good game made for, uh, the PlayStation Move, which I have put away in a box for, like, two or three years now. Uh, pretty much almost ever since I picked it up. It was a nice thing to try, but <clears throat> I think that <clears throat> Sony stopped supporting it as soon as it really started, and... Honestly, I'm really disappointed in that. Army of Two, uh, a game I just picked up on impulse because my friend really wanted to try it out. And uh, sadly, the servers for this game are long shut down, so I can't even play two-player co-op in this game. But uh, from what I did play, it's alright. I, I don't really find it that intuitive or fun to play, um, because I'm not really into the kind of bro-hug shooters. Uh, I can see how people could really find enjoyment out of this game, though. Um, as far as interesting facts goes, Nolan North is in it, so <laughs> if you're a fan of Nolan North, pick it up. Another game I played all the way through, actually, is uh, 007 Bloodstone, and <clears throat> to this day, I still think it's a pretty cheesy Bond uh, sort of game, but I still think it fits in the universe, and I enjoy it a lot. Um, 
if there's anything I wish that was better about this game, it was actually, like, the way this game renders humans. Um, yeah, that's about it, because the game looks great. The visuals for the time look really, really good. I think this was back in 2011, and I still think the game looks really, really, really cool. Um, but the way the humans are rendered looks really awkward, and it didn't really look like they put a whole lot of time into it. This game even has the balls to be on the To Be Continued screen, and I don't know how well this game even sold, so I guess we'll see if we ever even get a sequel to it. Okay, I'm going to just put these two games together, might as well. Uh, no, More, no More Heroes, Heroes Paradise. I have the Japanese version and the English version of this game, which is funny because I didn't... They were saying that this game was only going to come to uh, Japan at first, and so that's why I got it imported. And um, this game, the Japanese port is awful. Uh, not just because I can't read any of the text, that's obviously not why. The reason why is because they didn't have the... They didn't have the sense to put in any install time, so you'll be waiting these long, long, long loading screens in and out of everything. And that's annoying, but the, the, I think the best version of it is the American copy. Um, not only because you can use PlayStation Move, but they actually put in an install time. Um, I think the game looks a little bit crisper on this, and uh, I can actually read it. Um, it's actually kind of funny, because they kind of have the same exact sort of covers. Um, but either way, I recommend it if you haven't played No More Heroes yet, so definitely pick that up. Okay, I'm gonna mix match these a little bit. Am I? Ah, either way, I might as well just talk about each one individually. Uh, Sonic Generations, uh, a game that I really enjoy. I already have the PC version, so there's not really much of a, a reason to play this version anymore, because it runs at 30 frames, <coughs> and it's a pretty bad conversion compared to the 360 version. Um, Sonic Generations is a game to pick up, though. I definitely recommend it. Pick it up if you haven't done. Sonic Unleashed, uh, a game that I have very, very fond memories with. Because I remember the hype leading up to this game. It's like, Sonic is finally going to get a game that utilizes his speed and things like that. Obviously today, this game, um, the standards don't hold up as well because the Werehog really drags this game down. Um, what was thought as like cool in Sonic Team's eyes wasn't really the right thing to do, and I should also say that this game is not really the version to pick up for the PlayStation 3. Uh, it runs fine, I guess, if you don't have the trained eye, but even when I wasn't on PC gaming, um, I had this game and the frame rate was all over the place and it just didn't run as well as the 360 version. Subsequently, the 360 version doesn't run that great either, but either way. Uh, a game I don't really need to say much about, Sonic the Hedgehog, the reboot, Sonic 06, whatever you want to call it. I did a whole P LP of that game on the LP Bros, so I don't really feel like I have much to say about that. Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing Transformed. Whew. I love this game. I absolutely adore this game. There's actually no reason for me to even own this game. Uh, mostly because... I mean, I have it on the PC, but I also own Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing Transform, or Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transform, I think is what it's called. But I think in terms of uh, this game, it actually has a lot of things that are better compared to the All-Stars Racing Transformed. Um, I think the racing mechanics are really nice, and I think that for its time, it's a really, really fun game. I think it even still holds up well today, and it still looks phenomenal. Um... <clears throat> I think the Samba de Amigo stage actually uh, shows what this game is most capable of, and its color and lighting and its smooth effects, its cartoony style really holds up, and I definitely recommend you pick that up. I actually like these games a lot better than the Mario Kart games, so that should say something. Um, Rayman Origins, a great platforming game that I love. Uh, <clears throat> platformers are really, really undermined these days. And I have Rayman Legends over there. I've said all I need to say about Rayman Legends, so I don't really feel I have much to say about Origins. It's got its flaws, but it's a really fun game. Um, just don't play it multiplayer unless you're, you plan on really screwing around. Portal 2, I cannot say how many hours I put into this game. 
I played the, the single player a whole bunch, I played the multiplayer a whole bunch. I spent about 30 hours of this game in the month I had it, and I don't regret this purchase at all. The best part about having the uh, PlayStation 3 version, actually, Uh, this code won't be used anymore because you can't use it, but I'm going to cover up anyway. Uh, you got the PC version completely free, which is always a nice touch um, if you bought the PlayStation 3 version because the PlayStation 3 and PC ports or versions of the game could interact with each other and you could play online with them, and that's amazing. Um, I love Portal 2 to death. Uh, anyone who knows me knows I love that, so yeah. Uh, Catherine, a great puzzle game. I never got through it. I had the intention of finishing it all the way through, and I would think I was pretty far into it. Up until the point my PlayStation 3 died, I got home one day, and I was so mad um, that my save for this got erased. I will go back to this someday, guys, I promise. And I love this game so much, and I will go back to it. Uh, Bayonetta. Uh, a port of the game that's horrible on the PlayStation 3, better on the 360. I only bought this because I didn't have a 360 at the time. Um, I think Bayonetta is a really fun game, and some of the patches that they released for this game actually fix some of the problems. Um, but overall, it's a pretty shitey port of the game. I really wish they did a lot better of a job on it. I guess I might as well talk about these games uh, together as well. Assassin's Creed 1 and 2, I really wish I had the box for Assassin's Creed 2 because I love these games to death. And uh, I recommend everyone pick up the Assassin's Creed, or at least 1 and 2. I think all the other ones are kind of shite. Uh, I've been playing Assassin's Creed... Oh, this is hair flying by. I've been playing Assassin's Creed 4, and I think it's a lot better than Assassin's Creed 3. I'm glad they fixed some of the problems they had with that. Um, but overall, I don't think it compares to these two. Assassin's Creed 1 is a very repetitive game, I'm not going to lie to you there. But Assassin's Creed 2 is definitely the one to pick up because it's so much fun and I think a lot of people will enjoy it. And the final two games here are Batman Arkham Asylum and Batman Arkham City. I have so many good memories with these games. Uh, for one, I absolutely love Batman. He's my favorite superhero of all time, so of course I had to get his games. And personally, while Arkham Asylum isn't my favorite of the series, I still think it's a worthy successor in this it, to all the other Batman games that have come out. Um, definitely the best superhero games I've ever played, aside from Infamous. But uh, this game really takes the cake. I own a lot of copies of this game, actually. I own this version, I own the Wii U version, and I own the PC version. So that should say how much my love for this game goes. Uh, and I've beaten every single one. I'm actually on multiple playthroughs now with each of them. And I just can't get enough of this game. Um, in terms of the story, that's usually what I play. I don't really go for all the side quests and things like that. So, um, or the Riddler trophies or anything like that. But this game, man, I recommend everyone pick it up. It is so much fun. Do not let it miss your collection. So, uh, I have all my games down here. They're all sitting in these big stacks that now I have to put back up onto my shelf. But, um... That's about all I have to say for this, because the PlayStation 3 was a great system. I actually still have a lot more games to show off, but I'm not really going to show off my downloaded games, because I don't really think they're worth it to show off. <coughs> um, I do own GTA 5 on it, downloaded, and like Borderlands 2, but that's not important. I really just want to talk about the physical things side of things, and uh, hope that maybe you guys have some memories to share about your PlayStation 3 experience, or your Xbox 360 or Wii experience, or any other thing. Um, if you guys want to post a video response showing me your PlayStation collection, or your, you know, your collections of, oh crap, all of them are falling down. That's not helping. I'll just put these over here. But yeah. If you guys have any memories to share, post them in the comments, you know, do that kind of stuff. And, um, I hope the new gaming generation and all the kids out there really notice, uh, what kind of gaming pleasures there are out there, because the PlayStation brand is a great brand, and I don't think it'll ever really wear out for me. Uh, the PlayStation brand is just an awesome brand to have in your collection, and, uh, I just overall think that this generation is going to prove very similar to this one, to the one, the last one, I guess, the PlayStation 3. 
And, um, yeah. That's about all I have to say, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Anyway, this is Dave Conn from Broken Games, signing out. See you later.